thanks for taking time out. It gives me a great pleasure to have uh, you know, some very good friends I recently got to know. So we'll start off with uh, Shaguri. Uh, she's part of the customer success team at Wattfix. Uh, we have Fani, Anindra, who's uh, part of the customer success global delivery team at Matrix Stream. And we have Darshan, who's part of the revenue team at the customer success team. Slintel, which is part of Six X. I'm Prithvi, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Smart Carrot. Again, uh, welcome. All of you, thanks for taking time out. Uh, what we'll do is, uh, this is part of, uh, you know, uh, this is the first live in-person caffeine and carrot session we are having. We, we have this concept of caffeine and carrots where uh, we interact with uh, customer success practitioners. Uh, we are a customer success platform, uh, an evolving one. Uh, and and uh, hopefully we'll have a good discussion and take some questions from the audience also. Uh, I'll, I'll start off. So uh, Shagun, Fani and Darshan, uh, my reading of what I've seen in the last, say, you know, six months to a year uh, has been that this is evolving at a very, very rapid pace. You know, we started off ourselves solving for the initial problem of retention two, two and a half years back. Uh, it has already evolved into being now stretched into retention is a given. Two years back, it was an aspiration. Now, you're saying retention is a given. Expansion is you know, the new revenue uh, engine, if you will. Yeah. Uh, so we are seeing that, and, and multiple reasons for that, I think, I was also talking to a, quite a few members of the investment community. And uh, a large part of the investment community believe that a company which grows existing business uh, is more value compared to a company which is only growing net new revenue. So the concept of NRR was always there five years back, but now the focus definitely is the part of NRR which can give you growth, which is expansion. So we are hearing cross-sell, upsell much more. Most product companies have evolved into being multi-product, so the cross-sell concept is coming up. Uh, we are aligning to that, and that's what we have seen as a macro concept. So it would be good to hear you know, what, what you guys are seeing, you are more of the practitioners uh, uh, in this space. Uh, Shago, maybe we can start with you. Sure. I think uh, definitely, like you said, that retention used to be one of the aspirations earlier. And even when I joined Wattwix, it was like, what, somewhere that we were trying to, you know, reach 70% of the bread comparatively. And it was a huge goal at that time. Uh, when we had started, uh, you know, uh, when we formed the customer group, it was very small team uh, when we had started. And 70% uh, was a big goal. And right now, 90% seems pretty okay with, with us, you know, that, okay, if you're not achieving 90%, where are you? <laughs> so that's how, you know, the dynamics have shifted. And um, right now, we're not just expected to, you know, retain customers, but we're expected to ensure that, you know, they're getting value out of it. So value is not something we used to talk earlier on. It used to just, you know, give customers what they are asking, uh, you know, find uh, things to just get things done, just make them happy right away. Now you are able to also say that, hey, this is okay, this is not okay, this is something we can offer, this is something we shouldn't be offering. So I think the journey from retention to actually uh, you know, the value driven focus that is there, which, which has, uh, I think, created a lot of, uh, I mean, I, I would say the right direction for products. That is something which we were not talking about earlier, we were just creating products. Now we talk about, okay, what value the product is giving us. Yeah, so uh, I should be, thank you. Uh, so from an expansion point of view, right, uh, I work for Metrixing, I had the uh, delivery and then customer success uh, team as well. So the normal trend is like, if you have customer success means it's an add-on role, right? So basically, it will be a sales executive that comes with you and the customer success will be assigned for an account, account something like that. And then, so they both are actually focusing on renewables, maintaining the area, and then see the adoption point, right? But now, uh, the KPAs are increased, and uh, as Shaul mentioned, right, uh, not only the retention part of it, uh, they need to bring the value. And how we can do is, basically, the normal trend or traditional approaches like 100 QBRs. Now, what we are doing internally is, QBRs are no more, okay? So, what we value reviews, that is what we focus on. So basically, what we do is, customers, they purchase a product from us, okay? 
and we know we capture what are their initial objectives and goals, how they are trending, whether the value is getting created or not. We reevaluate re those expectations during the phase of the process. And once after the support is completed, right, then right, what happens is customer success and everybody will play a key role. And then they focus on maintaining the relationship and then adoption is a key thing. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. Yeah. I mean, because that's important. Shagun also mentioned the value of communication. Yeah. Also mentioned it. Let's come back and double click on that in a short bit. Let's hear from the yeah, sure. also what we see. Both of them should basically cover most of the points. But uh, so I just want to make something that as people make it very important right now, right? So we are a company that operates like you know, 135% in our mm -hmm. and that's our non-star business. So we've gone from you know, basically a revenue uh, for not full of growth to first reporting you know, basically in our So every company who aligns the business starts with you know, basically mm -hmm. what is in our revenue gap, right? And the reason why we have done that is that like you know uh, over a period of time you realize that more than revenue or growth or any of the other basically leading indicators, NRR is the biggest product validation mm -hmm. that you can get. So as a product company. Uh, instead of basically kind of tracking all the other metrics, so first we go to NRR, right? Mm -hmm. And we say that like you know, the NRR is tracking and so and so, right? Then the product is getting validated. Yeah. Uh, so any company, I think, like you know, which focuses on product and wants to be product first, and now this entire push towards the basically product led to right? right. Uh, NRR becomes the core metric, right? That, that's the change that we are uh, seeing, and slowly CS has kind of evolved from. Uh, let's say one of the other teams has also contributed for a venture to which is actually be the front runner, right? And CS's responsibility towards product and product's responsibility towards CS has strengthened. So we see that relationship is built a lot more than like you know, what we have seen, what we would see traditionally in the quarter. I think product as a team also has evolved from like listening to sales and kind of like doing things right by sales for supporting the role of now hearing CS on hearing CS. And kind of like supporting retention and expansion, and then probably is kind of using that to drive sales rather than the other way around. Oh, wonderful! I think you know, we all agree in some shape or form we are seeing this. Let me ask all three of you. Uh, the trend is understood. There is something which is changing, whether it's value orientation towards you know, NRR, which means expansion, retention is a given now. All of you said that. What does that mean to your organizations and to your org structures? Or how have you seen that change or what needs to change to be able to do justice to this sort of uh, the shift? Yeah. So I can go first. Yeah. So uh, I think the role of like, you know, the chief customer officer right? like, has become like, as important as let's say the CMO or the CSO. Right? And we also see you know, the CRO role kind of like, evolving. And increasingly, like, you know, what we see happening in the industry is that like, you know, the CROs are coming from the space, right? Yeah. right? The CCOs are kind of like, evolving into like, the CR. And from there, you know, basically, like, the entire culture kind of like the thing is happening. So, when you have like one of the most important people on the table, you know, basically, looking from customer success, the entire like revenue mindset kind of like seeps into the organization. And we see this change a lot more happening now because previously, what we had seen is that like support people. Right, and then they get into leadership roles. But then, like you know, the entire organization kind of like feels that it's not the same, like you know, power dynamics. But now, with revenue leaders coming into the base, like in CS, um, the entire like CS org kind of like I also believing that like you know, they play important part in all this. Thing. So I think like you know, the C R O or the C C O S visibility, right, in the company or lands in like the board meetings and like in terms of like what's the board meeting. Becomes very important for the company to set the culture of like you know, it is what CS is also a right yeah. and that kind of seems to other things. Yeah. Are you seeing something similar in your own? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I completely agree with the question. And uh, the roles are evolving. At the same time, companies are actually coming up with different kinds of frame for the charter and uh, the roles and responsibilities. And that way, right, uh, it is leading to the new model. Uh, so that way, expansion can be done and then. Upsell process can be uh, increased not only focusing on the rewards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I, I have seen a very interesting uh, like growth path in my company. When I had joined as a CSM, we were very much with strong support to customer success, to solutions team as well, 
and uh, even at times you know serving and sitting and uh, debugging things for them as well. So from that, now we are uh, in a structure where we have a specific uh, onboarding team, we have a support team, we have a solutions team, and then customer success is supposed to focus on you know these specific three uh, objectives that are, that are there. So that's how the role has grown. I would say that uh, like from smaller company, I would say when as you grow, you obviously realize uh, uh, that you know this role. But I just love that how diverse this role can be. And uh, like as uh, Krishna also mentioned that you know the value driver part is which, which we talk about it. Like the CS becomes the revenue driver for the company. So that is something which we didn't think about earlier. That okay, you know, this can be a revenue driver for the company. Now you know that you're touching the bottom line. Whatever you do, back the bottom line. So I think that creates a lot of uh, I think value for the team altogether and gives you a savor in the company as well that this is what you want. This is how the customer would want. You become one of the most valuable teams within the organization as well. Let, let me ask. You know, uh, let's play a little bit of a devil's advocate and challenge this thing. Because it's one, these shifts are easy to say and aspire for. Uh, but if you're saying that there is a function, earlier a revenue driver and the function which drove revenue was revenue is equal to sales. Yeah. So, and sales as a function. As a culture has evolved over, and the resources associated with it has evolved over decades. Tools, frameworks, solutions, and consultative centers. You have a lot of stuff. A lot of salespeople, a lot of sales methodologies. Now you're saying sales is no longer the only function which will own it. There is an additional function which probably, in my belief, is going to be a little bit more important than sales because the valuations. Net new growth and evaluations of our existing account code it's are it's different. It's exactly right <laughs> the case of Postfix right now, and it's a case with your organization too, yeah. maybe yeah. with yours yeah. as well. So, but this shift is fine. The expectation is fine. Now you're expecting a function to now do support, sort of onboard value, which it itself is a big discussion to be had. <laughs> How do you show value and grow revenue? Yeah, right. Is that too much of a stretch? How are organizations addressing it? Before I give you a moment to think about this, uh, we are seeing a trend where a lot of prospects are asking us about does your solution system platform enable you know, multiple port like structures to be moved into the CS operations as an equation? So it's easy if you say CSM account, do this. Implementation account do this, but what if we have a board of this one CSM, one implementation, one trade, one account manager, one sales? A lot of times, CS identifies sales skills for sales, right? We have seen that. So, so what is your thought? Are you seeing some challenges there, and how are your organizations able to overcome that? Yeah, uh, okay, well, yeah, please. Okay. So, in metrics, what it happens is uh, sales they sell the solution, mm -hmm. and what happens is after that, sales to Professional services transfer to happen. So, I mean, normally in the industry, we call it as a professional services, but here in our organization, we call it as a customer success and service system. Okay. So, as soon as the sale happens, right, the, the account will be transferred to the CS system. So, there will be a delivery head, delivery managers, and then customer success side and customer success executive will be there. So, during that particular process, right, what happens is sales to PS transfer, but it is happening. Uh, there will be different artifacts we maintain, and there is a knowledge transfer that happens. And before that, what happens is uh, even CS will be involved, of course, and uh, there is a solution consulting team, product marketing team, and there's a product team, a product management team. Everybody needs to get into a single uh, platform, and then they need to move forward. And at the same time, during the execution, what happens is CS will so ask you in yeah. all of these roles who owns. Revenue. So revenue, uh, it will be won by uh, CS system, basically delivery head and then the customer success head. Okay. So in this whole process, what happens is when the delivery happens, customer success job is to make sure that the customer relationship is maintained and moreover, it uh, he gets connected with the customer and then provide the value of uh, insights to the product and he interacts with all the different teams. Let's say like there's a concern raised by the customer. With respect to the use case or whatever it is, right? 
so he brings in outside in uh, view as well, not not like inside uh, view. Uh, so from that point of view, what I can say, CS plays a key role within the organization and he ensures customer relationship. Is CS team, if I may, uh, do you also have the segregation that there is a CS role and then there is an account management role and then there is a sales role? Exactly. You have all three. Yes. So is it something similar you have also? Yeah, so Vortex also works on a similar model, but that you ask like who owns the revenue. So for us, it is the CSC. Uh, it is the CSX in particular. Obviously, we have a lead CSM, we have the CSM, we have principal CSMs. So the role lies with them. The account management team role lies with the sales team. It's not part of the CSC uh, with us. So there, there we do a lot of collaboration with the AMC where we provide them the insights that, okay, you know, this is something which we think can be a profitable uh, sell for you. So please go ahead and pursue this. And uh, then, like we mentioned, the board structure of it. Right now, we don't have that. But, uh, we have like, we have different teams which collaborate together for sure. Like, you know, CS person owns the entire logo. Like, whatever happens with the logo lies with you. It doesn't matter, you know, if this team doesn't work well or this team doesn't work well. If the account is going, it's your responsibility. So, is it fair to say uh, the CS team owns the Retention revenue and the account management team was the uh, upsell expansion. expansion revenue. Yeah. And does the CS function and the sales account management function roll up to a CRO together or are there parallel structures? Right? Yeah, parallel structures, parallel structures. Right. because like right now, AMG is under the uh, sales team and not under the CS. Uh, and both are directly rolling up to the CEO currently? Yeah. So, we see like so uh, we are in a unique situation where we basically like a very complex product, a company that was doing like a very complex product, a quite company that was building a relatively simple product. So Cintel is a simple data intelligence unit and six and six feet and right? So uh, in Slate that like when we started the product was in a space where the six was supposed to be able to literally like including the basically somehow. Right? Uh, when we got acquired what we saw at six and saw that basically the unmonthly like, debt already happened. So you had an option to consider that you had some issues to consider that you had a basic support. But all of them were going up with basically the CCO. Uh, so we saw our money happening. And what we decided to do was like, you know, we decided that Slinter will continue to operate the way it's operating until the product defines you know, basically when that money has to start, right? So we kind of like kind of let the product define, the complexity of the product define and basically how that money is going to but let me talk a little bit about success because there are a lot of people that like right. work on every account, right? Uh, so it is the core structure. So the core structure is already in place, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so we don't have a platform that's yeah. kind of like supporting that. So our biggest pain right now is that like everything is manual. But what we see happening is that, and what we have defined is that the CSM is going to be like the account director, so the director of the account. Okay. The best, and, and they are going to this with all the metrics. When they do the metrics, they will be reported by uh, the yeah. So the biggest, the best analogy that I can give is basically what we tell our CSMs is that like you are the director of the orchestra. There are people playing individual instruments, and you are supposed to know basically arrange them in such a way that finally the output is music and not noise. Otherwise, it's a uh, sales team, by the way, will follow up if you're using it. <laughs> 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 if you're not hearing this. But anyway, uh, jokes aside, you know, uh, this is very interesting because the orchestration example is true. Uh, and we have seen this uh, play out. This is not new. I mean, this has played out in other industries earlier. You know, services, we have seen this. Uh, but, but I think the complexity is much more right now because there are products involved. You mentioned unbundling. What is it? How do you sell? How do you sell? So let's get back into a little bit more of trying to understand how do you sort of break this up? It's still okay to say CS owns the orchestration, but what sort of skill is required to orchestrate? Right? And how do you inculcate that skill uh, at scale? I mean, you can find one or two people who will do this very well, but how do you now create as you are scaling? Uh, is that a challenge? That Orchestration rule is it a challenge? So you have to be jack of all trades. You have to be. So there is no option you are saying. Yeah. I mean, you have to. Like, because at times, as I said, if you sit on a debugging call also and ensure that the customer is not being frustrated, you, you're just there not to like literally work on anything but that the customer is not being frustrated. They are okay with you just being there. And, hey, you know, let this happen. 
And those are skills which you cannot expect somebody who's very technical and who's focused on you know getting the problem resolved. Yeah. So uh, you have to kind of wear all the hats at different points in time. Sometimes you are coordinating between various teams internally that okay, can you please just come on a call, you know, to pass by this customer because right now just you know him knowing that somebody came to help him, you know, even if you're not able to resolve that issue at that point in time. So it's just about knowing what the what is required in that point in time. And a lot of times I can still enjoy the that I know that this person has worked on this issue for almost 10 days and it's not getting resolved. Uh, so then if they can customer the customer somewhere text like hey, I know we're going part of this, so if we can buy something else. So I mean yeah. Yeah. seeing a jack of all trades is required. Yeah. How do you build a jack of all trades <laughs> scale? Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. Uh, my biggest uh, for customer, right? Uh, customer success is even though it's a single point of contact. From an escalation point of view, sharing good news as well. Let's say like if there is an escalation, what happens is uh, it comes to customer success team and then it trickles down to the <coughs> next levels. So if there is any problem, right, it goes to the account management team and then account management team works on it. Let's say like if they were not able to resolve, then, uh, so customer success, right, uh, we need to go back to the product team as well, offer help and then extend that kind of support to the delivery team and then we need to act as bridge between uh, different teams and stuff. But uh, from your point of view, so one thing is authority and control is one thing uh, CSM need to have. That's when we need to be able to provide and bridge the gap. In most cases, I would say CSF don't have that at all. Yeah, they don't always have it. <laughs> and yeah. it also has to be hard, honestly. Yeah. So if it's just not, there are, not stuck yeah. to then. So there yeah. are some cases actually, like uh, if CSM is playing a good role, right? Yeah. Definitely, customer will reach out to him and then. Uh, if they are not over, they find out there. Otherwise, what happens is sometimes CSM will be ignored yeah. and then it comes to uh, hmm. director or delivery head. And then, right, what happens is. Uh, the escalation part it follows. Yeah. yeah. Look, look, it's a relatively new function, right? Yes. So it's yeah. kind of like very hard to find people with like all the skill sets and like uh, she said, like we need people with like most of the skill sets kind of right. So what we see happening is like, you know, there's a lot of investment that companies have to do like, you know, building engineering like and training. Uh, and that is something that like you know I think a lot of companies have understood. And therefore, like you know, we provide a longer onboarding time for our CSMs than for let's say other you know, standard teams. Like our salespeople in a business start up within a month, right? Like a lot of people just start off, right? But with CS, you know, basically we have a good three month long like onboarding, and that's a cost that like we have to bear. And that's the time that like we need to plan for, uh, just because like you know we need to uh, reskill them in many of the areas. For example, uh, there are several parts that people can. They can be sales. Like I was in sales before, yeah. so like you know, uh, that's one part. Support, right? Like you know, they can become CSMs. But then, if you just look at like these two words, right? Like you know, there's consensus about it better. Um, so you need to kind of unlearn a few things, yeah, yeah. like uh, to support people to basically kind of unlearn a few things first, and, and learn a bit to put on their sales hat and like you know, have their strategic mindset, continuously looking for opportunities and stuff like that. And the sales people have to you know, basically unlearn just pushing for yeah. like you know, revenue all the time. More value and um, so I think it's a function of it's a problem it needs to be solved. Uh, and the only way like companies, major companies, to solve it right now is like just by giving that time uh, and ensuring that like there's enough ability support for it. So from a scale standpoint, you see the resource part is obviously a one aspect of this. And there is a process element to it. And the orchestration which you mentioned is equally about the process orchestration as well as some amount of data orchestration. So many roles, so many expectations, so many moving parts, so many data sets, so many data elements. Uh, how, how are you overcoming that challenge? It's fine to you know still do it manually over time. So obviously, we as a platform are attempting to solve for that. Uh, but it's interesting to hear practically how are you looking at sort of doing that orchestration of so many elements of data, so many people needing access to the same data set uh, over a period of time. I think uh, for us, we do have a tool called the Tango that we're using, but I don't think it solves all the problem. And there's a lot of obviously manually that which time we can use that a lot of 
So I don't think this problem is entirely solved and obviously this doesn't help us collaborate with other things in Germany as well. It is definitely a good data repository. But if you talk about connecting this with you, we have to have a zero hold for our, our engineering team, then we have a product hold for our product product team, and for our AM team, we have to have sales calls. So, and CSM has to do entries on all these boards. So, so they have to touch all of these tools. All of these tools, we have to have knowledge of all of these and ensure that you keep them different there, you keep following up on them as well. So, Present them to the customer that's taking. So, it's a challenge. Yeah. It is a challenge, and I think, like, mostly it's by that, right? So, CS Ops is, you know, again, like, uh, so some companies have revenue ops, then I also have CS Ops, but then, like, you know, uh, many of the big companies now have CS specific ops. Exactly. And that is much heavier than, let's say, basically the CS Ops or anything else, right? Uh, and because you need those many analysts, yeah. uh, you need them to keep information on the dashboards. Many of the times, so basically, people from different CRMs and then like message to the CS team or like Google Sheets or like uh, Excel like, Sheets. Like so uh, I think there's a lot of automation that can be done there. Uh, but uh, yeah, like you know, having a dedicated option for CS uh, that's continuously like working on your data and reporting uh, because orchestration is not possible so you're not doing it. Right? Uh, so uh, that's the only way that. that yeah, so the current challenge is actually there is no single tool available in the market uh, which serves the need of the CS and moreover, right? CS may do it, they have presented to CEO, there is no tool ever. Even in metric stream, a lot of the process is planning, but at the same time, we have a separate system for legal and we have a separate system for track ARR and, uh, and uh, different uh, metrics for that matter. There is a separate server management tool to track them, NPS, NC set, a lot of other things and all. But I think there is a big challenge at this point of time. I think for a period of time, probably we may have a consolidated tool which will give complete predictability for the CS. Yeah. Let me put you in the spot a little bit. You don't need to answer this uh, directly. You can answer this indirectly as well. So, uh, as a trend, I'm you know, very interested to hear this. Uh, how much of a buy-in are you getting from a function standpoint from your top management, CXO, board, and above? So the ask is obviously there: grow revenue, retain customer, value delivery. But how much of a buy-in and support truly are you getting, and are you seeing that change? And you don't need to. You know, I know we are putting things on record here, but but generally, what are you what are you seeing in the industry? Yeah. Uh, I honestly have seen my you know, founders, co founders being very involved in our customer, at least you know, when we a smaller company, obviously on a larger scale, it's much difficult. But I have like caught up for uh, where I'm a bit of a delight at where I needed to come from this call with this customer will not budge. So, and he has to hop on the calls like at any time of the day. So, uh, that is definitely, and we have also like we have this experience sponsor thing where we have an internal champion as well for our customers. So our, uh, you know, top leadership works directly with those, uh, uh, with these accounts, like which, whichever bigger logos we have, we directly work with them as well. So I was directly working with Hardium on one of the accounts as well. So that kind of support we have seen, obviously, like as the company grows, it is a little difficult to manage all of that. But uh, as you said, that's where process is kind of a bit shy. Uh, but I know, like, and especially it also helps if you've been in the company for such a long time, then you know who to approach when you want to get something like that. Have you seen budgets increase? The function. Oh, I What about you? Yeah, there is a lot of investment happening yeah. within our company from a customer success point of view. Why? Because uh, definitely we see a value. And moreover, right? Uh, so, the customer success, not only the retention, they're responsible for the expansion, expansion of the process and all. Because when they were able to provide the value and bring revenue to the table, right, definitely our CEOs they wanted to invest in this. And moreover, what I can say is because it's a regulated industry, uh, I mean, mainly the GRC governance is kind of compliance, right? So normally we interact with the uh, CSOs, uh, CROs, chief audit officers, and all. So this particular role is pretty much required, and there's a investment, right? So from that point of view, in the organization from top level board as well, uh, there is a good support uh, It is there. And framework is getting evolved, but one thing is uh, uh, 
the clear charter and roles and responsibility, it, it is still need to be evolved. And as she said, like when there is an escalation, yeah. when we are able sure. to lose some customers and all right, like all over, yeah, all yeah. 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 So we try to resolve the issue. And one more thing is what we started implementing recently in Metric Shame is uh, we started the uh, churn audits mm -hmm. basically. I mean, uh, the thing is uh, with that. Uh, customer success is able to provide uh, value to the C levels. So that way, right? So uh, you're providing this a service to your customers. Exactly. Yeah. So that way, right, they see a value add and then they see a uh, retention, expansion. That's why they were able to give it for next. Yeah. The mindset is definitely changing. And uh, you know, there's a lot more focus on skills and like, you know, both organizations are like, sit there and it makes sense. Like, I've seen like the focus coming down directly from the founders. But the interesting part here is that you know we can explore this thread, right? Um, the founders like communication is so important and like when they spin the note is so important because truly if you think about it, so this is the last function that gets built. So like you have the product you have the engineering, then it comes sales, marketing, yeah. So we I mean, for Slinkle and basically I was the last leader. So, right? <laughs> so the sales leader was there like I remember for me. Marketing was there in the and a half years before. So what happens is at the leadership level, basically, there's already that, that kind of like a connection built in. So the biggest like problem is for the product that who do I listen to? Like, yeah. uh, like you know, if they listen to somebody yeah. else for one year, yeah. 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 So, so Darshan has come to you, you know, basically like, you know, why should I listen to them? So that's where basically, I think once like founders hire a series leader, uh, the amount of handholding and the amount of like backing they give you know, basically the clients you know, basically the direction of the yeah. Otherwise, it's really difficult, yeah. right? Like, you know, they don't like, you know, they don't see So, I think the founders have started understanding this and their mindset is definitely changing. Yeah. And they are the ones who set the code for like now, CSS with the dollar. Last question, Sarabashi, before we take some things. How do you define value in your organization? It's very different for everyone. So what's value for you? So, Value for you know, basically six senses because they can be a you mentioned. Like our direct value is you know how much did we grow our accounts in the company. Right? That is you know, basically the single most like, important metric for us because uh, that is what we are doing essentially. Like that is what like you know, companies are buying us for. So what we tell the sales and sense, this has to come from sales as well as during the initial meeting, sales and sales and one of the things that like you know we track a lot. This, like you know, whether sales clearly kind of understood the goals from the customer, and as that been communicated to CS, and as the customer signed off on it, right? So we openly ask our accounts, like you know, what is it that you are paying for, right? And we set the expectations of the screen because accounts will say, well, I want to go by the three percent, like go wrong, right? If we don't, like let's see, like you know, that is possible, and like we tell you how much of that we can control because there are many things that you can. So there's a lot of initial discussion even before CS takes an account on. Uh, but you know, what's the goal, right? And then it's CSS job to the basic kind of, uh, let's say, break it down quarter by quarter mm -hmm. and like start tracking it. Uh, so, I hope I answered the question. Yeah. It's really easy for us because it's revenue, but I can understand, like, you know, for other organizations, right here. Yeah. 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 And we'll come back to you. Yeah. Let's, let's think about this. This is internal value to you and the organization. What would value mean to your customer? Yeah. Yeah. So, one, you know, basically, you know, what growth with buying this particular food or so you're trying to measure some outcome exactly. they have achieved. Exactly. Like, and because like companies come as yeah, it's like you know, we can see this data and they can just do swift kind of uh, agreement on like quarter on quarter, like you know, where we want to The other thing of course like you know uh, like we were discussing earlier ROI and the whole cost of ownership like it is a big sense for the amount of food right here. Sure. What does value mean to yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. Because Metric Stream is a GSC company. We operate with uh, regulated bodies, and then uh, so if they don't comply, they need to pay the penalties and all, right? So the objective is like the claim on risk is our yeah, model. So basically, customers purchase our products just because to avoid penalties and then privacy issues and all. So basically, the value is, as you mentioned, our way, return on investment for the customer. Reducing the total cost of ownership, and we have business value calculators, ROI calculators as well. So normally, what happens is in in general, the notion is uh, let's say like there is a release happening in the quarter. We wanted to give with multiple features and all, so that's not the objective or value that we want to create. 
So basically, we see like what is the real customer need, and then accordingly, right, uh, we try to deliver the value uh, because one size is not fit for everything, and moreover, you should not be in a kind of situation like uh, eat or die kind of thing. So, so normally, what happens is uh, uh, there is a value uh, derivation that happens at every phase, as I said, uh, every year as well, and then internally we capture uh, using the expansion uh, growth and our sales process. Yeah. So, what is value for you? Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, it's internal and external both. And as I mentioned, that you know, you have to, it depends from customer to customer what you need. Um, so, internally for us, it's definitely GRR that you know, how much are you saving your accounts. Um, then it's also NPS, that how happy the customer is with the product. And uh, then it's also about, you know, how much active is the customer on the product itself. Well. It's not just that, okay, you know, he's happy and, you know, they've uh, gotten the retention, but uh, to reduce the churn for future, how active is the customer on the uh, uh, on that platform as well. So I think these are the few things that we need to focus on. Um, then obviously, obviously, we organize a lot of internal things, I think it's for like the strategic positions, we ensure that there's a lot of talk about the product internally within the company. That is also something that we task sales as well. That you know, how much are you uh, targeting the senior leadership? How many good connects do you have there? And not on obviously, uh, uh, I mean, you can't really measure these, but this is something that at least I definitely can show that, you know, me and the team members focus on. And it has resulted in very good, uh, I mean, it's intangible, but it has resulted to a lot of goodwill for us within the company. So, this is more of an internal thing that we focus on. Uh, externally for the customer, uh, we are the digital adoption platform. So for them, uh, and we can work on almost any application. So every application has different needs. But our major focus is on chain management adoption of any platform. So uh, first we have to see what does the adoption mean to the customer. That is something that we have to understand. That okay, like you have all this tool, and this can be engaged in 10,000 ways. But what does the adoption mean for you? Uh, so we have been able to measure value in very, very different uh, ways. Like for example, my customers we were able to uh, get them more sales through increasing their marketing campaigns. And you know, could literally measure the how much we're getting that company. Like the investment they have made. Depend on platform to platform. Correct. Yeah. So you know, the five X returns they had, and then one of the customers literally they had hired a new take phone calls uh, for a new tool that they were deploying, and they had also put what the company. And the team didn't get some new They had to do their tags into a different role. So that's the kind of, uh, uh, you know, value we were able to give to the customer. And that customer is like a fan of ours. You see, uh, that customer goes right, left, and center, even talking about that competitor that, you know, the competitor is not exposed to this. So that's the level of, uh, you know, trust that we're able to build with the customer. So we definitely, like with customers, we see them tell the champion that we've created. The kind of uh, impact that we be able to create, not just with the specific application, but also within the company, like how much impact. Sure. The goods would be is one. The goods is one. Yeah, yeah. Sure. for sure. That's it. Good. good. I think it's a good conversation. Let's let's hear some questions in the next five ten minutes. Anyone? I have a question for Darshan. So <clears throat> you spoke about NRR, and that's obviously a very important one because. Well, ERR you can buy. NRR are very tough to fudge, right? And that's why it is getting so much importance from the board. So, my question to you is if you were CCO today, uh, specifically in that role, what are three metrics that you would like to showcase to the board every quarter? NRR probably being one, but what would be the other two? I'm definitely on the board, my mind is for sure. Like, that kind of like is uh, let's say, uh, an indicator of like you know uh, how happy the customer is with the product, right? Uh, and you know is there as a so that it encompasses both your service and you know product, right? And the other thing is also you know, basically, uh, I would also like you know put gross retention into it uh, because and then both lower retention and retention, right? Because there might be what we are seeing is that like in certain like you know uh, segments of our uh, product. Uh, there are customers you know, basically like, you know, whose use case is so relevant 
that they expand so much that even if you're losing 50% of you know, this thing, the amount of expansion that one customer yeah. is providing will be a for another. Yeah. So reporting these two together, like you know, is very, very important. So mm -hmm. how much if you, your NRR get to 135%, but is it coming from just 50% like yeah. actual yeah. Revenue retention or is it coming from 90% actual retention? Yeah. And then NPS. So that defines you know, basically whether they're fully happy with the product or ask further questions on how uh, this is. Thank you. Anybody else? Stan, you have a question. Yeah. So I just wanted to understand how it got about the revenue model. I just want to get to the points on where do these signs of the people say they spend? And how is your organization that the industry perceived? I put a little bit more color into what you asked me. As you you know, this is around your pricing models, so your suite on one level. You may have different components being charged differently, and specifically around if you have a usage based sort of pricing. So, uh, this question how, how are you seeing this pan out? Do you have different pricing models for different components of your products or products? And what is the actually, I mean, we started with a small product, but now we have also segregated into different parts of that same product. Like, you know, we have some we call it user actions, which is where you can uh, understand more about the user journey. And that is it's different different packages that we are charging. Obviously, there are some keys there as well, which, which are them differently, but we are still using the same product, just including a few more functionalities. Um, then we also, uh, you know, do it application-wise, the number of applications which you're using, or number of users that are coming on the platform. So these are different pricing models that we work with. Uh, again, it depends on the kind of impact these would have. Uh, so a lot of times, if it's an internal impact or if it's an um, application with more revenue and more security, you might have to you know, work with a little different kind of a model than you would traditionally work with. So I understood your question correctly. Yeah. 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 So I just wanted to add one thing. In my fiction, what happens is so we have old customers still in perfectionized this model. Yeah. Most of our customers are using subscription model, mm -hmm. but uh, the new trend is actually usage based. Uh, so, of course, uh, service now is our competitor, and uh, service now I mentioned that we have this kind of model. So, what happens is uh, based on the subscription, we capture a lot of the usage tags. Right? So, normally, what we do is based on the usage, we perform the audits, as average audit audits. So, what it gives is uh, it gives like all the eruptions of any coverage is there or not, and then based on that, right, uh, we wanted to reach out to the customer and then get additional revenue. Anything for that question? So, uh, I mean, Six Sense is a complex platform, right? Like, the GDU platform that we have built has like you know, three separate like components as well. This is one for sales, marketing, and then for like CS, and Ops as well, the four components. So, why? The entire story is that, like, you know, one single platform to kind of unite them all, mainly, right? Um, people still, you can still buy any user model, like, say, platform only for marketing, maybe, you know, that's sure. a big thing. Platform only for sales. Um, so, but I'll talk about, like, Mr. Ritter, so Sintel kind of like, you know, fits into the sales offer because like, we are a data inclusion model, right? So, we charge customers only by, like, you know, the number of licenses that we want and the number of credits that we want. Right, and like you know, uh, so there are different slabs. So, slabbing is something that like is popular these days. Like, you know, more licenses you buy, more less and more licenses. And the same thing with this gap is kind of better. And we have with six months, like we have the startup plans there to buy a plans with the standard model. That's all. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I have a question. No, good. good. Thank you so much. I think it was a good conversation. Look forward to continuing it, right? Yeah. So yeah. Thanks, thanks for doing this. Thank you very much.